I've heard many people say that co-parenting is a very hard job, especially when or if the parents don't get along. But what about if you as a mother had to let your child live with their father and their stepmother because you could not take care of them for whatever reason, only to find out that they are being mistreated in such a horrendous way? If so, this is the case of Adrian Jones. If you want to know more about his case, please continue watching. This bright little bubbly boy with the big huge smile is Adrian Jones. And you would never know it looking at his smile on this photo, but he was being terribly abused by his father and his stepmother. So much so that he was almost skeletal by the time that his the last photo of him was taken from him being abused and starved by these two. It is so sad, but this is a picture of what he looked like when he was photoed after not being fed and starved for a while by his father and his stepmother. And they used to abuse this boy very horribly. They even went so far as to lock this boy in a shower stall that they had modified so that he could not get out. But in order to understand how we got here, we have to go back a little further to the beginning of when this all started to happen for Adrian Jones, when his mother sent him to live with his father and his stepmother. And this is when his world would be turned upside down and his troubles would begin. Adrian went missing in October or November of 2015 because his remains were found in November of 2015 on the family's Kansas City property after officers responded to a report of domestic abuse and that is when they learned that then seven-year-old Adrian Johnson was missing. Now, I don't understand how a child who is seven years old can just simply go missing because, correct me if I'm wrong, children at that age should at least be in about first or second grade. So they would have to attend school at some point and they would have to be accounted for. And even children that young they do have, um, I think, at least yearly doctor's visits, even though there may be nothing wrong with them. They still need yearly checkups and everything like that. So I'm not sure how he just went missing. That doesn't seem, you know, um, normal to me that a teacher or somebody didn't say, hey, we haven't seen him in a while. You know, where is he? This boy's f father and stepmother bought pigs a little while before uh, Adrian went missing. And they said they purposely didn't feed the pigs for a while because they wanted to make sure that they were nice and hungry, I guess. So when they planned to do what they did to Adrian, they could then feed his remains to the pigs which they did which is really hard for me to imagine 
this man as a father to this little boy feeding his son's remains to pigs. And I'm not even the type of person to, you know, pick on the way somebody looks. But in this case, I'm going to have to say this. It's not like the woman that he married or was dating, whatever she might have been to him, girlfriend, wife or whoever. It's, it's not like she, you know, was Miss America or looked like Beyonce or something, because believe me, she wasn't. Um, so how would you let a woman, no matter if it is your wife, your girlfriend or whoever, talk you into murdering your son and feeding his body or remains to some pigs that you guys had bought earlier and basically, you know, waited to feed him his remains to them. I don't understand how you as a father who basically gave life to this little boy or helped create him could let something like this happen at the request or hands of a woman that didn't have anything to do with creating his life. As the news reporter was writing this story in an article, I guess they asked her about, you know, him and, you know, how she felt about him or what have you. And even in some posts that she had posted on Facebook and also in text messages that her and um, Michael, which is Adrian's father, shared she had said that um he was a psychopath and you know um hard punishment didn't work with him because he doesn't feel pain basically and there were also some text messages that were you know um exchanged between her and the father where they were talking about restraint methods that could be used such as uh, handcuffs and ace bandages and splints that they had used in the past. And it also shows that she made references to having no problems with having him look at the flowers. Now, if you don't know what I mean by that, that is a reference to an episode of The Walking Dead where this lady... Uh, basically had her daughter doing uh, the same thing before she ultimately killed her. Now, on one of these Facebook posts that she made, somebody, uh, I'm not sure if they thought she was exaggerating, which is probably the case, but somebody commented under one of these Facebook posts that she had made about him and said, bless your heart for taking him in. And I'm thinking to myself, like, if that is a blessing or seen as a blessing by this person who wrote this, whether they knew what was going on or not, I'd hate to see what a curse looks like because they basically starved this boy to death, beat him, and did all kinds of horrible things to this poor child and i'm surprised he survived as long as he did now remember when i said earlier that the mother um or the stepmother excuse me referred to adrian as a psychopath she said that he would chase her around with a kitchen knife and he had he had dumped her baby out of a bassinet and she also claims that he kills everything that he comes into contact with. And she also said, as I described earlier, that pain compliance does not work. I guess because, you know, she says that that is something that would make him a psychopath. And she also talked about using leather belts and things of that nature on him. And also she said that he had to be a restrained 95 percent of the time which brings me back to my original question why was he not in school 
I mean, even if you just sent him to school to get a break from him, you could have at least sent him to school so you could have that little bit of a break from him if he was as bad as you say he is or was. You could have done that or hey, you could have even taken him to a doctor and said, you know, we think he needs to be put on medication because this is happening at home. He's chasing me with kitchen knives or sharp objects, what have you. He's dumped my baby out of a bassinet. He's done this, that, or the other. You know, any of these things would have caused the doctor to say, okay, we'll take a look at him. We'll run some tests on him if it was that serious. But you did not have to kill this child. Unfortunately, that now we know he was being abused. I just don't understand how someone could kill the child and make a child from going to look like this, healthy and fine. And then a little while later, you see him and he looks like this. I'm just glad that his father, if that's what you can call this disgusting human being, and his stepmother got life sentences for his murder and his mistreatment and abuse. Because there is no way you could take a child from being healthy, you know, looking fine and okay. And then, you know, you see him months later and he looks, you know, emaciated and just basically skeletal while he's still alive anyway. And he also, little Adrian, also told a social worker that, you know, bones come out when his dad punches him in the stomach or hits him in the top of the head. And basically, they did nothing to save this little boy. His life could have been spared if that social worker would have listened to him and removed him from that home he could have possibly still been alive. I just don't understand why CPS is so confused in a way where they take kids that don't need to be taken from homes. They take them and then the kids that do need to be removed from bad homes, they leave them in these messed up situations. And then when the child ends up dying, that's when they want to get involved which in this case, that didn't have to happen. This little boy could have been spared and saved. But unfortunately, CPS failed him, just like his paternal grandmother said. They failed him. The system failed him, and that didn't need to happen. But if you guys like this video, please don't forget to leave me a like. And if you are not already subscribed, please make sure you subscribe. And leave me a comment down in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.